Hey guys, it's Lady, and today I just really wanted to talk about this conspira theory. Get it? Conspiracy and theory mashed together? But yeah, so this conspira theory has just been stewing in my brain soup since I first heard about this recent theory from the CN community. And by that, I mean the one about Iaimiko, her entirely revamped kit, and how she might have originally been set to release back in 2.1 instead of Kokomi at the time. And so, though this was mostly a gameplay theory from what I could see, what really got to me was the thought of how this could have affected the entire narrative of the Inazuma Archon quest, starting with even the prologue released in patch 1.6. Because like, We've seen how Hoyoverse normally runs character banners based on current story importance, right? Which will play into my copium conspira theory here. But before we dive in, I do want to add a couple things as a preface. So firstly, this video isn't meant to break down any units in depth gameplay-wise. I'm just trying to focus mostly on how this theory affects the narrative of the game. And secondly, this video is just meant to be fun speculation. There's no point in holding anything against Hoyoverse for what happened with Inazuma anymore because there's no way to change what's already happened in the past. But with those things said, though this is supposed to be a story slash lore focused theory, please bear with me as we go over some gameplay mechanic stuff first because it's this stuff that will lead into the story part of my conspira theory. So to start off, let's take a look at Guyun Stone Forest and how there's a certain artifact set that, lore and aesthetic-wise, seems to work perfectly with a certain pyro archer from Inazuma. Yeah, that's right. Look at how good the Retracing Belight set looks next to Yoimiya. So, I speculate that Yoimiya may have actually been the original character they had in mind for our introduction to Inazuma, but for some reason or another, her release was delayed. And by intro character, I am referring to how the first people we meet from each of the first two regions, Mondstadt and Liyue, are Amber and Shanling respectively, two pyro girls as you can see. So turning to Yoimiya, Lore-wise, she has connections to Beidou, who as we all know is the reason Traveler was able to get to Inazuma in the first place. Both Kazuha and Yoimiya's friendship lore mentions that the Pyro Archer gets a lot of exotic stuff from the Crux Crew's captain, which can also be literally seen in Yoimiya's character demo right here. And then there's also the Retracing Belight lore and how it's about the Summer Festival, which, lo and behold, fits perfectly with Yoimiya, the queen of the summer festival. And not only that, but this artifact's two-piece and four-piece bonuses also seem to match her playstyle, as in, she really wants a shield character because her multipliers are highest on the ladder attacks in her normal string, meaning she doesn't want to be interrupted. But now that we've covered all this stuff about Yoimiya, let's turn the topic to the actual unit we ended up getting as our intro Inazuma character, Kazuha. Talking about gameplay aspects once again, we can see that Kazuha's 5-star weapon doesn't actually look like it was meant for him, right? Aesthetically and everything. I mean, he's even shown to be using a fillet or fillet blade? Like, feel free to correct me if I'm wrong guys, uh, in his actual character demo and collected miscellany. So unlike other 5 stars who are normally seen with their signature weapons in their own demos, for example, Xiao with Primordial Jade Wing Spear, or Hu Tao with Homa, Yula with Song of Broken Pines, and you get the gist. I know there are other exceptions to this as well, like Ayaka not using Mist Splitter in any of her character videos, or Yoimiya not using Thundering Pulse, but to that I'd respond that there are also no other characters using any of those 5-star weapons just mentioned in any official videos either. But 
in regards to the freedom sworn in particular. It's actually Jean using the sword in the patch 1.6 trailer, not Kazuha. And again, I do get that a similar thing has been done before, like how Sean Ling is using Staff of Homa in the patch 1.3 trailer. But I'd argue that's because at the time, Mihoyo was keeping Hu Tao a complete secret. Like, because of cultural beliefs surrounding Chinese New Year, there was no official news on Hu Tao at all until literally just days before her banner dropped. And two, Sean Ling is a four star. So all in all, the point I'm trying to get at is that the Freedom Sworn does seem like it might have been for Jean originally, aesthetically and lore-wise. And even if you did remove the clearly Mondstadt-inspired design aspect about it, the part of the lore about how the people end up following their respective Archon clearly doesn't fit Kazuha. Now with that said, piggybacking off of the theory first brought up by the CN community, I speculate that because they couldn't figure out Yoimiya's kit in time, they may have had to swap in Kazuha, a unit that was much more finalized. After all, it's much easier to change a weapon's stats than a character's kit, so perhaps Freedom Sworn substat was attack or something else that was more fitting for Jean at first, but then they ended up swapping the substat to EM so it would work better with Kazuha. And on a related note, Yoimiya's kit still felt unfinished to a lot of people when she first came out. Like, you know, she's known as the Queen of Fireworks, which are really just pretty explosions. And yet, her kit focuses on single target damage. She has a really cool charge shot animation too, but it's not optimal to play her that way. So perhaps she was originally conceived as an AoE unit, but they didn't want to open up the absurd damage that Ganyu's charge shots have left in the wake of her first banner. So, in other words, something changed along the way. All of which kind of proves the point that, at the end of the day, they probably wanted to do more with Yoimiya, but didn't have enough time to finalize everything. And if Yoimiya was actually ran in patch 1.6, I feel like Jean might have run as a shortened banner in between Klee and Yoimiya, because I do realize a weakness in this theory is that two pyro DPSs back to back would have been weird. So as a kind of copium counter argument, I feel like something similar to Kaching and Hu Tao's two shortened banners could have been in the works here. Especially when considering Jean's new skin was just added in this patch. But so, the fact that the banners might have been switched leads us to the next part of my conspira theory, and how the plot beats of Inazuma's Archon Quest may have been swapped around last minute, which could explain why many parts of it just felt really disjointed and unpolished. Since Yoimiya has a line about wanting to meet Klee, it just makes me weirdly suspicious that they could have had some kind of involvement planned during the Midsummer Island adventure. Meaning perhaps there was more emphasis on the summer event, and less on a prologue to Inazuma. Like, I get that not having Kazuha in patch 1.6 would mean that there would be a very different Inazuma prologue, or perhaps we weren't even supposed to have one until patch 2.0, when the actual Inazuman islands dropped. But nevertheless, I feel like Yoimiya as the intro character to Inazuma instead of Kazuha could have helped players feel more connected to the outlanders on Rito and the common Inazuman on Narukami Island. Or in other words, the actual plight of regular Inazumans would have had more of a presence in the main story, instead of only via world quests. Because let's face it, most players just aren't going to feel incentivized to do the side quests of random NPCs. So I feel like if we started off with smuggling in necessary goods for the summer festival with Yoimiya and Beto, by extension, this would have given players more incentive to invest in the plight of Rito's outlanders and that of regular Inazumans without having to rely on players doing the world quests. Plus, adding on to this, we see that Yoimiya also works with Toma at times. 
Both are definitely very people persons, as well as being commoners, so I think learning more about the common folk problems via them would have just made sense. But speaking of including relevant things in the main Archon quest instead of just side content, I was chatting with some members in my Discord, which by the way you can join at discord.gg slash ladyvirgilia. It was brought up that Ayaka and Yoimiya's forced story quests feel a little out of place. Like how Yoimiya reconnecting friendships torn apart by war could have fit right in with just the main story. So to reiterate, I think just a couple additions and or tweaks in the Rito Outlander stuff and early Act 1 stuff may have resulted in less criticism about how Ayaka and Yoimiya's mandatory story quests were handled. But now going back to if Yoimiya and Kazuha's banners were actually switched, I think our favorite Animo Samurai could have added so much to the Resistance plotline first introduced in Act 2. Now, that'd mean that the very important topic introduced with Kazuha's friend's vision would have to be explored elsewhere, which I honestly feel like could have worked perfectly fine even after the Traveler had already arrived in the country. As in, Kazuha's friend's match with the Raiden Shogun could have easily happened during the actual Inazuma Archon quest, in my opinion. Perhaps Kazuha is the one who ends up almost having his vision taken instead of Toma, after stepping forward to claim his friend's vision and all. It kinda just sits weird with me that Toma was able to get away with just sitting low at Narukami Island after everything that went down with the Shogun. Like, the way Kazuha's story is currently implemented in the actual narrative we got, he had to literally flee for his life, right? Legit to Liyue even. So like, even if Toma is technically part of the Yashiro Commission, and might have even had some Shumatsuban training so he can sort of ninja his way into hiding places, like, I mean, yeah, that's just too copium for me, actually. It just feels narratively inconsistent that he'd be able to avoid capture by the shogunate like he did. But on the other hand, I think it would have been much more natural if Kazuha was the one who had to go on the run with the Traveler, both as fugitives, after standing up to the Raiden Shogun. Plus Kazuha's status as a wanderer who's good at reading the weather and terrain and all that stuff would have totally fit with the journey to find the resistance on Yashiori Island. And most of all, having Kazuha join the resistance here really would have made them feel so much more relevant. And to be completely honest, it's just strange to me how Kazuha ended up escaping Inazuma only to come back so quickly. Like, in the written lore, he's said to have already bunked with the Resistance prior to escaping to Liyue. But like, why would he have to leave in the first place? It just makes me think that perhaps he was never intended to be in Liyue before the war was over. And instead, it was just the potential swap with an unfinished Roimia in patch 1.6 that caused Hoyoverse to have to like, quickly come up with a plot that involves both Kazuha and Beidou, when things still would have worked out just fine with Yoimiya as our connection between Liyue and Inazuma, with Kazuha as our connection to the Resistance. Toma, Ayaka, and Yoimiya could have still played their role in helping the Resistance by 1. connecting them to Beidou and other mercs, and 2 helping out Kazuha and Traveler by telling them about the Resistance and sending them onwards. And by the way, remember how we did some sort of prison break thing with Yoimiya earlier in the Archon quest? I don't know exactly where I'm going with this, but I just feel like that could have been another possible and really natural way to introduce Kazuha to the story. So, just in general, I feel like running his banner in 2.0 would definitely have coincided well with the plot where Kazuha was made to join the Resistance during the actual Archon quest, all which would have solved many of the criticisms people had about it. 
Like, I could see people being more forgiving towards Kokomi for not playing a huge on-screen role in the narrative if it was supposed to be more focused on the foot soldiers in the first place. So like, Kazuha, Goro, and Teppe. I mean, Kazuha and Goro are even said to be good friends in various characters written lore. And then, regarding Teppe, just think about how much more powerful it would have been if they implemented the whole thing about Kazuha trying to reawaken his friend's vision in the Archon prologue, but instead among the people he meets in the Resistance. I think Teppei's story would have resonated with players so much more if he couldn't reawaken the vision, therefore becoming more willing to accept the Fatui's delusions once they were offered to him. It also could have opened up a very powerful possibility to explore in Kazuha's eventual, please, story quest. Cause think about how devastating that would be to know that so many of the Resistance troops became so desperate for the delusions because they couldn't easily reawaken a masterless vision. But now we've arrived at the final major part of my conspiracy theory. That being how Kokomi and Yae's banners were also likely swapped. Because like, Yae seemed to have such an odd amount of presence and screen time for a character who had no release in sight. And said substance in the narrative was especially egregious over Kokomi in Inazuma's Act 3. Then looking at her gameplay-wise, Yae is rumored to have been focused more on normal and charged attacks, and in general conceived as an on-field DPS, though apparently she was reworked for some reason. Now, this would make a ton of sense considering how unique and beautiful Yae's normal and charged animations are, yet given her current multipliers, it's not the optimal way to play her. Plus, the amount of time she's on field to even place her skill totems, especially when compared to a quick swap in, swap out unit like Albedo or Fischl, also points to Yae being meant to have a lot of field time. And that's not even all. The Shimanala artifact set would have been a perfect fit if she was supposed to rely on normals, because it also fits her aesthetically and lore wise as well since it talks about the Grand Narukami Shrine and the Lady Kitsune. Plus plus, if Yae had released in the banner right after Raiden, I feel like people wouldn't have focused so much on Raiden's anti-synergy with Beidou during her initial launch if Yae, an electro DPS with perfectly working normal attacks, released in the banner right after. Now, taking a look at Kokomi, having her initial release in 2.5 also seems to make more sense, considering Enkonomiya's release just the patch before, and also patch 2.5's current event. I mean, even the free event weapon looks like it was made specifically with Kokomi in mind, and her kit probably would have been much more polished by then because there sure were a lot of people who thought Kokomi was unfinished upon release. Plus, her best artifact set damage and healing-wise, the Ocean-Hued Clam wasn't even out yet back in patch 2.1. But most of all, when it comes to her role in the story, if it really is true that she was originally planned for 2.5, it'd help explain why her role in Act 3 of the Archon Quest felt so lacking. First of all, based on her lore, she's consistently brought up as an amazing strategist and yet the plot makes her come off as naive for really no real reason. I just get the inkling that they may have been trying to write more story for her very last minute, when in reality she may have been intended as more of a background character that they could slowly build a lot of hype for, like Ayato. Since, you know, all us Ayato mains have been living off NPC and bulletin board crumbs for the past 8 months. But anyway, considering the mysterious hype in between patch 2.1 and Enkonomiya's actual drop in 2.4, I feel like it just adds to the theory that Kokomi was only supposed to pop up here and there in the Archon Quest, 
and have more presence later on via a story quest or something. Which brings me to this really interesting YouTube comment that suggested that Kokomi, Yai, and Ayato were all co-conspirators together, since personality-wise, they all lean towards being behind-the-scenes type of folk, if you get me. <laughs> Kokomi would have looked a lot less reckless if her contact with these anonymous sponsors was actually via Yai's recommendation, especially since it's Yai that seems much more sus and likely to believe the ends justify the means, given how she traded the Gnosis away to Scaramouche seemingly so easily. And don't get me wrong, I'm not saying Yai is a nefarious individual. But back to Kokomi, her lore paints her more as someone who just wants the best for her troops and her people, first and foremost. So with that in mind, the only real way I could buy Kokomi getting blindsided by the Fatui's delusions infiltrating the army is if she just trusted Yai's word as a co-conspirator, as in another fellow Inazuman who was also working to end the war. As for how Yai would have gotten in contact with Watatsumi in the first place, well, we know that Kokomi really likes Yai Publishing House and buys lots of military stratagems and light novels from there. So while there's definitely no real evidence for any of this, I can't help but headcanon now that Yae had some important correspondence slipped into Kokomi's purchases. And though we still don't know what exactly Ayato was doing during the entirety of the war, hopefully we learn more when he releases next patch! I just think Act 3 of Inazuma's Archon Quest makes much more sense if it was Yae who was supposed to be the main brains behind everything, which then could have given Hoyoverse more time to craft and elaborate on this grand conspiracy to stop the Vision Hunt decree in Kokomi and Ayato's story quests. Because if Yai really was released in 2.1, it'd mean they wouldn't have had to rush out a story quest for Kokomi back then. And in case you didn't know, Yai and Ayato are already known to work together, being head Shrine Maiden and head of the Yashiro Commission respectively. So maybe they both could have been 5D chessing all along, trying to put an end to the Vision Hunt Decree and the war and happen to find the help they needed in Kokomi and the Resistance. So to recap, based on the current artifact sets that were released with Inazuma at the time, and her presence in the narrative that kinda just overshadowed everyone else, including Kokomi in Act 3, I just think there's a really plausible case for Yae having supposedly been planned for a patch 2.1 release. And just the possible banner swapping in general due to unfinished and or reworked character kits just becomes a little worrisome. But while nothing can really be done about Inazuma's actual story anymore, as it's literally already out, it's still totally fair to voice constructive emphasis on that <laughs> criticism in the surveys just so we hopefully don't ever have a repeat of this. Though, oh goodness, Sinru is just around the corner. But ultimately, this was all just a theory. A game, I mean, conspira theory. So please let me know what I may have missed or gotten wrong or if you have other things to add because I'd love to hear your feedback and thoughts about all of this in the comments. Also, please like and subscribe if you enjoyed this as well, and check out my playlist of massive lore guides, and also come join our welcoming Discord server at discord.gg slash ladyvirgilia. Follow me on Twitch and Twitter if you like as well, and just as an added note, I do a ton of Persona and Trails content on my main channel, so check it out if you like. But otherwise, thanks so much for watching, and take care guys.